good day to you. This is actually my vision on July 28th, that is yesterday. Uh, I saw Hannah making the small ephod garment for Samuel, eldest son whom she gave to the Lord's ministry. I saw this mother's dedication to see the next generation serving God, being prospered by God. This is a time like that I want to make an appeal to every Christian parent. Though schools are difficult, make your home the mission compound. You remember pioneer missionaries, they went to other nations and their home was mission compound. They did education, they did everything at home in those pioneering situations. We have to uh, work as if we are in a pioneering situation. Last 70 years are done and finished. I call them septicade, last 70 years. From 1950 to 2020, strange isn't it, 2020, supposed to be best vision. But what a calamity that came on the world. 2020 is the best vision as far as eye accommodation goes. Uh, if you go to optometrists, that's how they will talk. But 1950 to 2020, very quickly in 1950, after the Second World War, nations were devastated, nuclear power had just been unleashed, that are ferocious, and the world looked gloomy and dim. But God gave the nations another chance. How do we know God gave the nations another chance? One classic example is uh, South Korea. Because of the Korean War, they were demolished, devastated in 1956. Every bad place in Sri Lanka was referred to as Korea because Korea was known to be all gone, devastated. But by 1970, South Korea was rising its head again, raising its head again because of a servant of God called Dr. Paul Young Cho. And he, not only he, many other denominations were touched by the Holy Spirit and it became such a tremendous nation touching, nation transforming revival and they produced global quality brands and in just one generation they had recovered and become a strong nation economically. Now that could have happened with any nation but it was not to be so. Many nations took a tumble above all the market forces took over and that's what happened. So by 1985, the market moguls, the global oligarchs, the global dinosaurs, uh, those who drive the world through profit decided we have to run the world our way. Uh, maximum growth is now done and finished. In the normal way, can't get any more growth. And so they decided to take all the resources of all the nations into their hands and they launched the consumerist extravaganza which has ended up with the COVID and the financing and the commercial profit of the pandemic. Uh, but in such a time, such a time, every Christian home becomes a mission bastion. Actually every Christian home becomes a kibbutzim like Israel in the uh, independence war, war of liberation in 1947 and 1948, every kibbutzim held, every Christian home has to hold as God's forward defense line. So let's train up our children, though they can't go to school, let's believe that as they uh, train them to read the word, train them to write a little journal out of what they read. So when they saw their best in God, when they saw their best in God, uh, best in God, God will reward them in their secular field, their studies, so parent, please be industrious, as Hannah was. Now, Samuel was ministering before the Lord as a boy wearing a linen ephod. This is 1 Samuel 2, 18. And his mother would make him a little robe and being, bring it to him from year to year when she would come up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. May the Lord give you, and Eli blesses her, may the Lord give you children from this woman in place of the one she dedicated to the Lord. And they went to their own home. The Lord visited Hannah and she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew before the Lord. And what was the consequences of that life? Two Samuel, 1 Samuel 3 says, verse 19, Then thus Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fail. So when we give ourselves to the word of God and when our children give ourselves to God's word and God's call, all what we have to say and work and speak becomes the industry of God. God prospers what we have to do and what our children, next generation. So it's a time 
parents attend on their next generation, it's a time shepherds attend on their next generation, ministers attend on their next generation, shepherds, uh, churches attend, attend on their next generation, workplaces attend on their next generation to get them into a God move. God is on the move. So what does COVID say? COVID says every generation's time has come for reckoning. Also it means every generation's time has come for a good seed sowing and for the last great harvest your life can have. You may be 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, it doesn't matter. God has a bag of seeds. Now it's the time. All Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. This is 1 Samuel 4:20. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh because the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. This, thus the word of Samuel came to all Israel. So that was the call of Samuel. And then uh, that the Uri man to him and all what God needs. Lord that they will have all we can give and to catapult them to divine momentum. And we, we, we look at Psalm 139. Uh, and how we are formed in the mother's womb. Similarly, God wants to form us now <clears throat> with all his thoughts concentrating on his bride, on God's people, because there is another womb time to birth another 70 years. I don't know how long the Lord is going to take to come, but it's a birthing time of Revelation 12. So that's why the womb action, the womb growth that David is thinking about in Psalm 139 through the Holy Spirit is relevant for this time because a new age is being born. That's what the travail says. Uh, Matthew 24 verse 8 says when the travail begins, what happens when the travail begins? A man child is going to be born, Revelation chapter 12, and he's going to get a rod of iron to rule the nations. Then he's caught up to the throne. I don't know how long this process will take, but it looks a very urgent boot camp that God is getting us into. It's like a womb period of 40 days, 40 weeks, 40 months, I don't know. But this is a womb time, so I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. So he's forming again, he's forming again our, our, our actions, and I will join you again with another short message on another section about the toad spirit that is running across the world. What does that mean? And also about our next generation is like arrows in our quiver. So we are making arrows for God to shoot and we are giving our quiver for that. So uh, we are the quiver for the next generation arrows. So after our success season, we move on to significance. And our significance is training up the other arrows. So we provide safety, methodology, and uh, their momentum, space, and time for them so that they have their call of God as the bow. They get it for their life. We nourish and nurture the arrows, and they put their cheek. God puts his cheek. We put our, put our chief for this threefold cord. God, us, and our next generation learn to send the arrows to target to maximum flight, maximum momentum, maximum area of achievement and productivity, of course, keeping God's character. That's the story of the arrow. Behold, Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose kiva is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Their call is God's bow. Their arrow in life season, arrow every life season for God to launch them to God's best from age to age. 12 years, 24, 36, 40, 44, whatever the age is. Next generation to launch them to their God-given best. Lord, you wear us on your heart as signet ring. I have already done that. Then, I, and then this vision was reported. And the vision reported was this, that there was a huge toad in a building. Toad was seen in this vision. And it looked very evil with wisdom. It was a toad body and a serpent tail. The two have got together. Evil wisdom and evil toxicity. Uh, 
and I saw Revelation 16, 13 to 14, I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God Almighty. So demon spirits, the frog, so frog puffs up and becomes very offensive, uh, spirit of offense. And then it's used in a lot of mumbo jumbo and deceptive magic kind of thing. So the fake prophecies and all the fake signs, uh, the deceptions that uh, Matthew 24 speaks about and then comes the iniquities, lust and the and all the fertility cults and all the stuff that goes on. So those are the frogs but we have, give, we have been given uh, power to battle this, turn the battle at the gate from Isaiah 28, 5 to 6 in that day. The Lord of hosts will become a beautiful crown and a glorious diadem to the remnant of his people quite unlike the dirty unclean frog spirit. A spirit of justice for him who sits in judgment. A strength to those who repel the onslaught at the gate. So we are given to repel the onslaught at the gate. And that's what we learned, the arrows also, that uh, the man who has arrows full in, a, in his quiver, arrow full, he will turn the battle at the gate. Battle is grievous, Lord equip us every hour. Help us repel, battle at the gate without our enemies invading our premises in Jesus name God bless you God make you strong in Jesus name